Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about sand battery. So let's dive right into it. <coughs> so what exactly is the problem that we are trying to solve with sand battery? Well, the problem is that an renewable energy is a big deal at this point in time and they are financially viable. So more and more people are adding solar farms and wind farms. That's good. Problem is they have their own timetable, meaning they will not provide energy all the time. And there could be a very serious issue where you may have energy surplus when you don't need it. So that creates a serious issue, which we classify as power generation curtailment, meaning many times you will find wind farms and wind is blowing and all the wind farms are turned off. Now, generally it's not done for maintenance, it's generally done because of power curtailment. And that affects the profitability of farms. And it also happens in solar farm. It's just inverters turning off, it's uh, hard to see. So. It's one of those issues, power curtailment. Then we have come to the industrial world that we have requirement of quality heat around 400 degrees Celsius uh, plus. If you can have that kind of heat, many industries will you list. For example, textile industry, metal industry, cement industry, brick industry, a lot of other industries also, they will like shut up and take my money. If you can give me quality heat, 400 degrees Celsius plus. And the idea is we have surplus power, we have requirement of heat. What if we married that together? That's the whole point. So what's the logic? The logic is basically at peak curtailment, when you are shutting down majority of your wind farm, uh, basically all the farms will sell you power for much lower price. For example, at normal time, normal everything is working fine, the price is X. At curtailment time, they can sell you at X minus 50% or sometimes even lower than that because here still low profit is acceptable compared to no profit. And many things are time sensitive, meaning a solar farm is only gonna work for 25 years. So if most of the time you have to turn it off, you're not gonna make your money back. So fundamentally, companies do want to sell you electricity 24 into seven. If they can make it, they want to sell it. So there is always a profit incentive to sell electricity even at lower cost. So be mindful, zero profit is very bad compared to, you know, a low profit. Ideal profit is awesome, but low profit is still acceptable compared to zero. So <clears throat> we can convert that energy, surplus energy into heat. Now that heat can be used in industry. How many industries? Almost every industry. So that's desirable. Now, what do we have to actually achieve? We have to achieve what we call low cost quality heat. Uh, what does that mean? That simply means, think, uh, let's say there is a textile industry. They are consuming, let's say 400 degrees Celsius heat. Now they are producing that using electricity. So they will be spending X amount of money. As long as you can sell them heat, for less than X, they will buy it willingly, knowingly, with a smile on their face. And that's what you have to do. Can that be done under physics? Yes, because you are buying the original electricity for lower price. That's why it can be done. And round trip efficiency of thermal systems are very high. So it can be done. And uh, that's what makes it practical for mass adoption and use. Meaning, this is the simple graph. Basically, you have night, night, you have daytime. Solar power produces GG amounts of at, uh, energy in daytime. But here's deal. Demand is in early morning and early evening. So at this point, you could have curtailment issue where you have to shut down farm. Instead of shutting it down, you convert that into heat. That heat will be consumed by industries or if you have district heating, especially in winter places. So this is another graph that should give you some context like Californian electrical grid. And you can see that as more and more solar is being added, the dip is going deeper and deeper and deeper so it could reach a point where they literally have to shut down all other power plants or maybe even shut down solar itself because they are overproducing because again there is not that much demand at daytime but it will be producing so instead of shutting it off they're like hey how about we dump that energy excess energy for lower cost into thermal systems and then sell that thermal energy to industries for lower cost they make profit this does not have to shut down everybody wins so that's the logic behind it so what about the design <coughs> Now design is they are using sand. Why? Well, sand can allow you to go very high temperature like 600 degrees Celsius. Can you use salt? Yes and no. Yes, salt will allow you to go higher temperature, but will come with a consequence of phase shift, meaning you will change phases. Now changing phases have its own pros and cons. So many times people do not want to, uh, you know, deal with it. You could have pipe jamming, you could have a scenario where things are not working as expected. So people do not want phase shift. Even if phase shift stores more energy, they're like, how about having something that we call solid state or like fixed state does not change. Like if it's liquid, it stays in liquid. So that's desirable. And water does have higher capacity, like how much oomph you can store in, uh, let's say, 100 tons of water. It's generally higher than sand and all that jazz. But problem is temperature. It will only store till 100 degrees Celsius unless you go into steam. At that point in time, you have 10,000 hassle that you have to deal with. So that's why sand has been selected. And how do you heat something this much? Well, you use air. Basically, you have pipes, uh, highest quality stainless steel pipe, and you put GG amounts of resistive heater and you circulate air. 
and that's it that air circulates absorbs the heat from the resistor dumps that into the sand sands overall temperature slowly brick by brick starts to rise up and heat is one of those things that electrical resistors are 100 percent efficient so we don't have to worry about it and air is the heating fluid again they could use other fluids but i do not know any other fluid that can remain chill at like you know 600 degrees celsius and does not like you know become solid at low temperatures like uh, 200 degrees celsius that's why these things are selected very specifically for simplicity just put it and don't think too much about it sand pipes air resistors done go home that's the whole point of it and they have sand to air heat exchange basically this exchanger it will be powered by one side when they are charging it will be powered by other side when they are discharging when they are dumping that heat into district heating grids uh, industrial processes that's up to them and tank can store heat now this is where this puppy becomes interesting it can store heat for months not days this is this puppy is not like oh i'm gonna charge in day and discharge at night no 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 this puppy is like keep charging this puppy throughout the summer and use it at winter this puppy is what we classify as seasonal energy storage, meaning it can jump months. You can keep charging. Let's say in summertime, you do not have that much energy requirement, especially in places like Finland. But you you're still producing it. Your solar panels are still going GG. Your wind farms are still going GG. You may have uh, other uh, nations that are connected via HVDC, and they may be like, hey, we can sell you electricity if you want to buy it. We, otherwise, we have to do curtailment. You have GG amounts of energy. You can just like absorb it, absorb it. And you're like, when are we going to spend it? In winter month, where electricity costs are higher. So that's the whole point. It's very simple, very elegant. And the fact that it can store it for that long, that's desirable. No phase changes for stability. That's why it can actually, like people have tried with salt system, but because of the phase change, it does store more energy, but it also becomes inherently far more vulnerable. It's like a little bit of temperature, it becomes to solidify and the end. Your pipes get boomed out of existence. So what about this demo? Now this demo was done in Finland, uh, working sand battery, like from Polar Night Energy. Now I will not try to pronunciate the name of the place, but this, uh, this is the puppy. Now the idea is, is that Finland joined the NATO recently and Russia freaked out and they cut off their oil and gas. This happened very recently. Now at that point in time, this is red alert. You are a cold nation, you need heat. At that point in time, they needed something which we classify as fast, large and easy. They cannot be like, oh, we are working on research project. It may work in like 50 years. No, no, no. We need something now. We need something today. So this technology clicks all the boxes. Do we have resistive heater? Open your phone, call them, they will deliver it. Do we have sand? Open your phone, call them, they will deliver it to you. Do we have silo manufacturers? Open your phone, they will get it delivered. Do we have insulation? There are many, many, many companies that can sell you. So every aspect that goes into making this puppy is just pick up your phone, done, go home. And simplicity of the structure is exponentially, is basically simple. It's not nothing fancy in this. And they have 100 tons. Now be mindful, this is what we call trial grid. This is like, can we actually do this? We're thinking about it, can we actually do it? So they tried with 100 tons of sand. Now that puppy can store eight megawatt hour of heat. Now that may not sound too much, but be mindful, this is just raw heat. And because they have district heating and because of the fact that remain in winter for like four to six months, uh, that is like shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. And given the fact that it's very high temperature, it also makes it quite easy to dump that heat into useful system. So during summertime, during times where you have low uh, energy demand instead of shutting off wind farms shutting off solar farm they're like just keep dumping the energy into the sand battery and during the peak winter times dump the heat of uh, these battery into district heating grid do not try to dump electricity that's the whole point otherwise it will not be energy efficient can you run a steam plant out of this yes would that be viable no the energy efficiency round trip energy efficiency will go down to the drain you could have uh, go down to as low as 25 percent so that's why wherever you need the heat directly and even in hot places like india we may not benefit from the heat of like this puppy as a direct district heating system but for industrial processes this is like shut up and take my money because this reduces your energy cost because during curtailment companies are selling you electricity for very cheap you can store it and dump it into the industrial plant when electricity prices are higher so you save money <clears throat> so this is the demo puppy so what about the deployment stage well you have to understand heat as a service is not familiar to indian people now again it's nothing bad for us nothing bad of them it's basically western people know winter we know summer we are like they are saying oh it's super hot of like 38 degrees celsius i'm like bro we don't even call it hot unless it reaches 48 degrees celsius so it's one of those things that they know how to handle winter, we know how to handle summer. So heat as a service is not something that Indians think about. It's not something that you can go to Delhi government and it's like, can you do this district heating system? They're like, dude, what's the use of it? 
Now, there could be a scenario where you can use district heating as cooling service by running it through what we call absorption chiller, but it's not that uh, viable in terms of COP, coefficient of performance is not that high. So can it be done? Yes. Should it be done? Uh, not really, but that's up to you. Now, <clears throat> district heating grid is not everywhere, even in Western countries, like you go to USA, not every place has that district heating system. So it's not just like a plug and play. It, the, like, of course, Finland has it because again, they are freaking cold. So in the really, really cold places, they are like, shut up and take my money. But other places, they may have to invest into district heating system. So that could require a, a very expensive infrastructure build. Another aspect is practical terms wise is like it has to be built at what we call point of use. Meaning in case of India, there, let's say there are places that have cement plants, a lot of cement plants. Uh, there is an area known as Nimbahara and Rajasthan that has a lot of cement plant. Like you drive in the highway, there is a lot of cement plant. In those sort of places, all those companies can invest a collective system and they can build a giant uh, sort of uh, basically sand battery from this puppy and they can all use it. It can be done. It can be done or like if there is a very giant company itself, they can build their own. It has to be done at what we call point of use scenario <clears throat> because high temperatures are very hard to transport. Can you transport heat effectively from A to B? Yes, you can use very high temperature water at very high pressure so it does not boil off and you can carry a lot of heat from like a power plant to anywhere you need to. But when it comes to high temperature heat, basically let's say 400 degrees Celsius, 500 degrees Celsius, transferring it for long distances as in like even in few kilometers is not as easy as you might think. So point of consumption has to be the place where you built this puppy. Now it does also require two-way communication. Whenever you hear about things like smart grids, interconnection in grids, this is what you are talking about. You need a way to figure out what is the energy rate live, meaning the moment uh, some power plant is reaching a point, hey, do we have to do curtailment? It has to drop the price and then these absorber units absorbs electricity to stabilize the grid. Then it's awesome. Without that two-way high-speed communication, it's not that viable. And other, at that point in time, they may be wasting energy uh, because again, it only makes sense if you can buy heat at lower cost than you are spending heat. Basically, if you are doing re electric resistive heating, you are spending X, you will not invest into the system unless this can give you, let's say, X by two. So that's why. Now, there is another benefit of this system because the system is inherently simpler. The bigger you make the unit, let's say 100 ton, that's a good start. How about? thousand ton. How about 10,000 ton? The bigger you make it, the bigger the self-discharge becomes. Basically, lower the self-discharge becomes. What does that mean? That simply means you can store energy on this puppy for years. Like you can just dump energy years over years over years. And then let's say you have a really, really bad winter once in like every 10 year, then this battery will be like, I got you fam. So low, <clears throat> low self-discharge is very desirable. So making them bigger and huge, it's actually cost effective. Yes, your price will go up. So your volume will go up by, let's say, 100. Your cost will go up by 20. This is from the company itself, but it's actually kind of makes sense. So it may be desirable to make huge battery. That 8 megawatt hour, that was more of, we call, uh, you know, getting started. That was like warm-up project. And Finland is going to need a lot of it because, again, they pissed off Russia directly. So uh, they need a bit more oomph to endure winter. And not to mention, all European unions are connecting each themselves with interconnections so they have very good interconnection data point where they can like literally oh germany is about to shut down their solar farm hey how about you buy electricity from them that can be done so it's uh, one of those things that is very specific for some places and uh, very specific for indian hot places but it can be used and it has some serious potential without costing too much so it is one of those things that is useful so this was my presentation on sand battery. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.